I'm here today to talk about Hollywood, but not really. We're going over to Universal Studios Florida, and we're gonna go over those powerful tips that you need to conquer your first visit to Universal. So let's jump right in. The first tip that you're gonna want to do is to buy your tickets in advance. This will save you not only money, but it will save you so much time. A lot of the authorized ticket sellers that Universal deal with, like undercover tours, how they have a lot of specials that are always happening. And if you buy your ticket in advance, you usually save a significant amount of money prior to trying to get it at the gate the day of your trip. Plus the line, that you have to get into to buy your tickets when you get to the gates are usually pretty long in the morning. So I always just say, get your tickets online. You can print them out or you can have them on your phone and they can scan them. You just walk right into the park. My next tip for you is to get your tickets from a trustworthy website. Now, with the pandemic and everything going on, because things are a little tricky, Universal Orlando website is having a lot of good deals. But say you come a little bit later, then you're gonna want to get it from someone like Undercover Tours, who we recommend here at Theme Park Hipster. I have used them personally for a lot of my trips out to California to the theme parks there. I've had no issues with them. That's why I recommend them. They usually have really competitive prices and they also have this little thing they have there called a crowd calendar to kind of let you know if this is a great time for you to go. But speaking of crowd calendars, let's just go ahead and talk about the next tip, which is to know when is the best time to visit Universal Studios. Now, this is one of the top theme parks in the world. Everybody loves the whole Universal Orlando Resort. Now, holidays, crowd sizes, and weather, all of that plays a factor in how your day will go. I recommend visiting Universal Studios either in the month of January February, April, and November. If you can't make it during that time, then I also recommend March, May, later in September, and kind of later in October. But November is my favorite month. Not only is it because it's my birthday month and they kind of have a little bit of the Halloween decor going away and then they bring in the holiday decor for Christmas. It's just a nice vibe in the parks. That's where you will find me there the most is November. The next tip is to possibly purchase an express pass. Now, this will depend on the time of year that you go. You may wanna think about getting an express pass. Universal definitely has some of the most innovative rides in theme park culture and the wait times to prove it. Now, a lot of questions that people have about the express pass, the main one being, are the express pass worth it? And I will say that it depends on a few factors. For instance, if you're only gonna be at Universal Studios for a day and you came on a very crowded day, then I definitely say get the Express Pass. On those peak days, it is extremely hard to do and to see each attraction available, especially now with only a limited amount of people being able to go through the ride each hour. They are quite pricey on top of your theme park ticket. So budget that out. They do have many different options for you to choose from. And that is the regular Universal Express Pass, which means that you can skip one ride one time. Then there's the Universal Unlimited Express Pass. That means that you can skip the lines a bunch of times. So let's go over the current Express Pass rides that are available at Universal Studios Florida. Right now you have Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem, E.T. Adventure, Fast and the Furious, Supercharged, Harry Potter and the Escape from Green Gods, The Hogwarts Express, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, Kang and Kodos, Twirl and Hurl, Men in Black, Alien Attack, Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon, Revenge of the Mummy, Shrek 4D, The Simpsons Ride, The Transformers Ride.
My next tip for you is to be sure to use the child slot program now. A true theme park hipster like you, I know you out there, you will most likely have a time where you will have to have the little ones join you or you will be with someone who is not into thrill rides like you and you guys are kind of trying to figure this thing out. Don't worry about that. You don't have to miss out on all of the fun at the Universal Studios attractions. You and your partner can take advantage of the child swap program where you'll both be able to scream on the Hollywood Rip Ride rocket as the little ones wait to the side. According to Universal Studios and what I've seen on my experience is that the child swap program works by allowing one member of your party to wait in a designated area along with any children who are unable or unwilling to participate. Once the rest of your group is off the ride, you'll trade place with your partner and then take your seat on a ride while those who rode previously stay with the children. My next tip for you is to have a game plan. You already know I was gonna say this. I do not see why you would wanna show up and not kind of have some idea of what you wanna do at the park View that map and you'll kind of get an idea of how the park is laid out. Once you have an idea of how the park is laid out, then you'll kind of know your path. So you may want to start in the back in Diagon Alley because you are a Harry Potter fan, that's where you want to go. Or you may just want to do whatever ride you see as you go along your path. But just have an idea. And also definitely don't forget to download the Universal Orlando app because that app will give you the wait times of the ride. It will also have the map included in there. And with all the pandemic stuff happening, they are emphasizing mobile ordering on your phone. So that is something that you wanna consider when you have the app going. You wanna make sure you connect your credit card, your debit card to the app so that you can get your food ordered quickly on your phone and just have a very easy day. The next tip I have for you is to explore the wizarding world of Harry Potter. And if you're like me, you're gonna wanna probably skip all those rides, go straight to Diagon Alley, get what you need to get done there, and then head back around Universal. That's just if you're like me. But if you haven't been to this incredible section of Universal discovering the wizarding world of Harry Potter, then you will definitely want to explore all the crevices of Diagon Alley and discover the dark streets of Nocturne Alley. And don't forget to go by Ollivander's to get your wand so you become officially a true wizard. My next tip for you is to try every butterbeer. Yes, you have to. This is a staple drink in the Harry Potter series. It's mentioned so many times and it's alcohol free. So just because it has the word beer in it, it doesn't contain any alcohol and it is served up in so many ways. There is cold butterbeer, frozen butterbeer, hot butterbeer or warm, which is served seasonally. Then there's butterbeer potted cream, there's fudge butterbeer, then there's butterbeer soft served ice cream. So where can you find this butterbeer in Diagon Alley? Right now, you can currently find it in the Leaky Cauldron. So if you wanna have lunch there, definitely grab your butterbeer. You can find it at the Hopping Pot, Sugar Plum Sweet Shop, and Florian and Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor. So definitely get your butterbeer, get that shot, put it up on your favorite social media channel so people can see that you have officially arrived in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. My next tip for you is to ride the Hogwarts Express to Diagon Alley. Well, from Diagon Alley to Hogsmeade. This is absolutely the best way of recreating the famous footsteps of that famous wizard, 
Harry Potter. Now, if you read that first book, you know about that whole experience of his whole journey, going into Diagon Alley, hopping on the Hogwarts Express, and heading over to Hogsmeade to go to Hogwarts. So you can recreate that. You can even go into King Cross Station. Yes, everything you've heard about in those books, you get to experience yourself. But please, please, please do not forget this tip that you must have a park to park admission ticket, meaning that your ticket must both include Universal Studios Florida and Eyes of Adventure admission. The next tip I have for you is to have your Universal Studios packing list together. Yes, if you're going to Universal, you're going to want to make sure that you have things like some comfortable shoes. You're going to be doing a lot of walking, a nice small bag to hold your things in, your essentials, breathable clothing because it is hot here in Florida. So you want clothing that makes you feel comfortable, that's light and loose. You're going to want to have sun protection, deodorant. Yes, definitely have that. A small umbrella, you want to have some water bottles and your wizard's robe and wand if you are that type of Harry Potter fan. My next tip for you is to know what you can and cannot bring inside Universal Studios. Now, Universal has a lot of these security checkpoints that you have to go through even if you're parking in the parking garage or coming from your own resort. And I'm gonna go over a couple of things that you can bring. You are definitely able to bring bottled water, small snacks that do not require heating, and any kind of food that you need for any medical purposes or baby food, that kind of stuff. My next tip for you is to enjoy the must-do attractions and dining at Universal Studios Florida. Like we talked about having that game plan, with that game plan, you're gonna wanna know what you must do. I'm gonna give you my recommendations, but always feel free to remove or add what you think is best for your trip. I recommend Escape from Green Gods. Then I recommend getting on the Mummy Ride. That's my favorite ride at Universal Studios theme park. Then I recommend that you watch the horror makeup show. It's an incredible show. It's a lot of fun. Then Men in Black Alien Attack. Then I recommend that you have chicken and waffles at Cletus Chicken Shack. I also recommend that you eat at the Leaky Cauldron on your trip. I recommend getting the loaded baked potato outside Diagon Alley. It's in this nice little kiosk in the London area. I recommend that you ride Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of scary, especially going up that first hill and coming down. And then I also recommend that you ride Transformers The Ride. So those are some of my top recommendations that you must do and eat at Universal. My next tip for you is to take advantage of the single rider line. This line can cut your wait time in half, especially if it's a busy day. And this is one of the perks of going to a theme park alone. It allows you to get around most of the attractions quickly because you don't have to wait in a normal line. But you may be asking, should I do the single rider line over the express pass? Now, the express pass is gonna guarantee that you're gonna go to your rides and kind of get to the front as quickly as possible. The single rider line is more of a gamble. It definitely depends on the crowd level, how many people's there because the single rider line at times can get crazy busy because you know, everybody's trying to take advantage of the single rider line, even people who aren't there solo. And keep in mind that if you go in a group and you do use the single rider line, that your party will definitely be split up. Currently, Universal does have quite a few attractions that you can use the single rider line. Currently, Harry Potter and Escape from Green Gods, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, Fast and the Furious Supercharge, Men in Black Alien Attack, Revenge of the Mummy, and the Transformers The Ride 3D. They all have single rider line, but always double check because, you know, things are always changing. My next tip for you is to use the lockers. These are usually located next to the attractions that require you to store your loose items. They are free up to a certain time period and once that time period is over, you have to retrieve your items. If not, you will have to pay a small fee. My next tip for you is to get a birthday button. What, you thought Disney was the only one who did special buttons? No, you can get your own birthday button to celebrate your special day at Universal. 
All you have to do is stop by guest services and say that it's my birthday. I want a birthday pin. They will get it for you. And you never know, you may have some team members out there who may give you something special just because it's your birthday. My next tip for you is to enjoy the free Wi-Fi. If you are coming out of town or out of the country, you may be worried about, you know, how you're going to stay connected. Then just know that Universal does offer free Wi-Fi. You just do the standard sign on and boom, Wi-Fi is there. The next tip I have for you is to know exactly what is City Walk. Visit City Walk on your trip. If you are parking in the parking garage or if you are getting dropped off by ride share, then you're definitely going to have to walk through City Walk. And basically City Walk is like an entertainment spot, kind of like Disney Springs, but a little bit more adult friendly at night. They have clubs that come alive, DJs that bring the music to you. And it's just a great environment, not to mention all of the delicious restaurants. My next tip for you is to get a toothsome milkshake. You haven't had a milkshake until you have went to the Toothsome's Chocolate Emporium in City Walk. They have some of the most unique and creative milkshakes. My next tip for you is to don't forget about the free water. You can get free water, basically tap water, at any restaurant inside Universal Studios and some of the quick service locations. My next tip for you is to grab your best souvenirs. Now, no trip, you know that no trip to any theme park is complete without souvenirs, but if you are trying to save some money, then I definitely recommend checking Amazon for some cheaper souvenirs, especially the Harry Potter ones, you can get those on Amazon. That way when you get to the park, you already have your wand with you and you can take all your pictures and you don't have to spend that crazy price. And also you can use places like Etsy, you get some very unique items on Etsy. Now my final tip for you is to just have fun. You are at Universal Studios. You better have fun, okay? So whether you're on your own solo Universal Orlando vacation or if you're with friends and family, just have fun. And until next time, happy park hopping hipsters.